Good evening. Good morning, everyone. No matter where you are, we want to welcome you to our Monday presentation. Today, we're going to be talking about essential oils and skincare, which is a topic near and dear to my heart. I don't know if you noticed, but I try to really do my makeup really well. So today you would say, oh, yeah, it's working on her. Um, if you're looking at me and you're thinking, What's her trick? I will tell you one thing though, wearing a red blouse or something that's gonna reflect well on your skin is going to help the way your skin looks. Now, you gotta make sure that you're using the right color for you. So you've got a lot of redness in your skin, they wanna tone it down a little bit, but that's a whole other topic. For me, a red shirt is gonna really make my skin kind of pop. And since my hair is a little bit lighter, it's also going to be a bit of a festive, uh, I don't know, jump, jump up for me. Have a wonderful day today, and we're going to head right on over to our presentation immediately. Let me share my screen with you. Today, uh, we're talking specifically about essential oils for our skin. We are talking a little bit about products, and we're also going to be talking about how we can um, use those products in the future to um, help our skin, keep our skin looking good, and also making sure that in general, we know what we should be using on our skin. I've heard a lot of stories, both good and bad, about people using different products on their skin. Not always the greatest idea. We wanna make sure that we're using things that are helpful for our skin. They're gonna make our skin look better, healthier, and really help it to heal. And that's our, that's our main goal, right? We wanna make our skin look really healthy. We wanna make sure that it is um, staying healthy. So I know some of you, me included, have used maybe some toxic products in the past. You wanna make sure that um, when you're using anything that's toxic, um, at least for now, that you are, um, just kind of letting go. If you're using something that's toxic, you want to make sure that you're letting it go because um, overall, those products that are toxic are going to harm your skin and they're not going to be good for you. So let's talk um, today's transform your skin with essential oil. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the environmental working group, which is something you may or may not have heard about. And if you haven't heard about that, that's something I'm going to bring up in about a minute. So the ideas expressed today are primarily from the book, Essential Oils Healthcare for Today, a beginning guide. If you haven't gotten a chance to take a look at this, it's got 50 plans for you and for, for all different sorts of health issues for you and your family. And I like it. I've always liked it, but I like it because it kind of boils it down, boils essential oils down to their essence. So if you haven't had a chance to look at it, please do. Um, next on our hit parade, we want to talk about beautiful skin in 2022. I think it's important for us to think about our skin, not just today, but in the future, where are we going with our skin? So if your skin is troubling you in one way or another, I would say number one on the hit parade, you want to make sure that you are hydrated, hydrated, hydrated. So what does that mean? Getting liquids into your diet on a regular basis. That could mean drinking um, anything from herbal teas to water, maybe even a little bit of juice. I'm not a big juice fan, but um, all liquids would help you. The other thing that's going to really help you are watery vegetables, things like cucumbers or tomatoes or any vegetable, um, obviously melons, any fruit or vegetable that has a lot of water. Lettuces tend to have a lot of water and they will help your skin. Now, why is that? Because when we crunch on a vegetable, what happens is the water is released, the fiber is retained in our body. And it's not like drinking a glass of water that tends to go quickly through our kidneys and then be excreted. Water in vegetables is retained a little bit more in the stomach and in the tissues. So we want to make sure that we're incorporating both things, liquids that we drink like water or things that we're eating that are actually watery. And that's going to help hydrate our skin, especially those of you who are maybe over the age of 35 or 40. Um, skin does tend to get drier. I can't say across the board. Some people still have oily skin, even into their um, older years, but skin does tend to get drier. If you live in a climate that's very humid, congratulations, your skin's probably going to look better. But if you are in a warm climate and you use a lot of air con, 
that can also be drying to the skin. Where I live, it's kind of cold and we are beginning to put our heat on. Heat dries the skin like crazy. So you wanna make sure you are moisturizing from the inside with your liquids and your liquid vegetables or your watery vegetables. And then you're taking care of your skin from the outside. Now we've often done um, a presentation that talks about the different types of emollients for the skin. And those would be your creams, or your, I'm sorry, your lotions, which are kind of your runny uh, liquids that would come out of a bottle fairly quickly. Your creams, which are going to be denser and thicker that you're going to maybe have to even dip in. And then your unguents, and those are going to be the things like your shea butters or your beeswaxes or any of the um, compounds that are made and there are plenty of natural ones that you really have to just smear them on and um, they don't come off easily. Those can be what we also call our occlusives because they tend to create a barrier for our skin and not allow things to either escape or get in, which if you have damaged skin, you want to make sure that you're protecting your skin as much as you can. So um, I've got a couple of uh, people jumping on. Anna's telling me that she increased her intake of water-based vegetables today, and she's sipping a cup of warm water now too. Thank you for mentioning that because sipping warm water can be a wonderful way for you if you're sipping it throughout the day for you to um, continue to hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Sometimes we get busy, we forget to hydrate, but it's a good way to keep it in mind. Okay, um, one of the first things I wanted to talk to you about is, obviously we wanna always say hello and welcome to everybody who's here. If you're new, please let me know in the chat. Um, you're all here today, I'm imagining, because you want to either improve your own skin or help others to improve their skin. And you know that by doing that with some just simple natural ingredients is the best way to go about it. Essential oils are more than just ni nice smelling aromas. They're plant compounds and they do have active healing properties that work with your body's chemistry to heal. So we want to make sure that when we're thinking about what can we use on our skin, we're using the right oil, but oil really do have that extra, I don't know, one, two punch that are going to help you with your skin. Um, for, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the history of these of essential oils, not too much, but specifically as they pertain to skin care. Um, they've been used for skin care since really for millennia in uh, four 4,500 BC, the Egyptians were using essential oils for cosmetics, ointments, incense, and perfume. And around 2,600, again, BC, so this is a long, long time ago, the Chinese were using um, some uh, from oils from a book, oils and herbs, aromatic oils and herbs from something called the Yellow Emperor's Book of Internal Medicine, which is still considered a useful classic by pr uh, pr practitioners of Eastern medicine today. Um, the Greeks, so first we had um, the Egyptians, then Chinese, and then the Greeks. And then the Greeks began to use uh, some of the things that the Egyptians adopting their skin practices and developed many tinctures and more ointments. And that's when we begin to see the use of myrrh, when it was carried, and myrrh was actually carried by Greek soldiers into battle to counter infections. So we know we still have myrrh today. We have myrrh essential oil, and it's one of the oils we're going to talk about. And then thousands of years later, Today, we're still finding uses and benefits to incorporate when ways to incorporate essential oils into our daily routines and discovering that really oftentimes old ways are better than our ways, things that we've developed today. Simpler can be better, right? And I'm going to teach you some tricks so you can really feel comfortable using essential oils on your skin. One of the things we have to worry about always with essential, with non-pure uh, products are chemicals. And there are tons of chemicals in typical skincare products. Um, if you pick up any drugstore acne medication, you're going to likely see unpronounceable words on the ingredient list. 
These are industrial chemicals that are really harsh on your skin and they can produce the opposite effect from what you're looking for. Often if you have um, acne, you're looking for something that will heal and smooth. And many of the acne preparations will actually dry and create additional redness, the last thing that you want. Um, two of the most common ingredients that you want to avoid if you're thinking of skincare are parabens, parabens and sodium lauryl sulfate. Parabens are found in moisturizers, self tanning products, tons of other cosmetics. Unfortunately, uh, parabens actually mimic estrogen and it has been linked to many different types of cancers, including breast cancer and skin cancer, and even decreased sperm count. That's really dangerous. Sodium lauryl sulfate, on the other hand, is found in lots of body washes, foundation, and face wash. It's been actually shown to contribute with to major skin irritation, even things like canker sores that because you're disrupting the body's natural um, oils and it's believed to be a contributor to acne. So you might be using a body wash or a hair uh, uh, product and then suddenly you're getting acne. Acne, could it be your sodium lauryl sulfate? Just a couple of uh, reasons why drugstore products in general even though they may be cheaper on in the long run, they're going to be difficult for your health. Um, I mentioned before I got started, something called the Environmental Working Group. They have tons of information on their website about the least toxic ingredients that you want to look for. Um, it's ewg.org. And um, the page that I just put into the chat is says skin deep. So that's going to talk specifically about your skin and cosmetic products. doTERRA doesn't sell cosmetics. And in many ways that, at least for me, it's a great thing. I want to be able to take care and protect my skin, but I don't necessarily want to be in the business of telling people how to put on makeup, ladies and men. I don't think you're interested necessarily in putting on makeup either. So let's talk about the health, the general health and beauty of our skin and leave the, I don't know, the, the fluff, if you will, to some, to some other companies. But there's our link to the environmental working group. If you're on Facebook, it's ewg.org. Um, we want to avoid irritation when we're talking about our skincare products. Um, not all essential oils are created equal. Um, they're super popular, as you know. If you're not using a brand yet, I'm going to ask you to consider uh, doTERRA essential oils. They are There are plenty of cheap, ineffective products on the market that you'll want to avoid. For true effectiveness, you want something that's pure or CPTG certified, pure tested grade, means that you're getting something that has been um, tested for heavy metals, chemicals, pesticides, and also adulteration which is much more common than you would ever believe. Um, if you're not sure where your oils are, are from, if you've been collecting oils from different sources in the past, you may want to just consider putting those aside or even putting them in the trash because essential oils in general are very absorbable by the skin. There's small molecules and they, if they're not pure, can cause more damage and irritation that you're not interested in. Um, another thing to keep in mind is that not all oils are beneficial for the skin. Today, we're talking about specifically oils that are beneficial for the skin. Citrus oils in general, while they are very powerful and great for our health and can boost our immune system and have many other health benefits, when applied to the skin, and then if you go out into the sun, you can have sun sensitivity. So we're not gonna be talking about citrus oils for our skin today. You need to use your citrus oils, put them on the soles of your feet, or put them on a part of your body that's not gonna be seen by the sun. Um, before you apply any oils that we don't talk about in this class, do a little research first. Look it up in a book. Look them up online. Um, be sure to dilute. Do a patch test if you're concerned. But we're going to give you so many resources today. I don't even if you know if you're going to need to go out there and find more um, links and things. But in the meantime, we've got some great information for you today. Um, let's talk about carrier oils. So we know that essential oils in general can be a little bit drying to the skin. They do not have natural fats in them. So when you're applying essential oil to the skin, do not think that it is moisturizing your skin. It is not. 
It does not, it is not a fatty oil like coconut oil that we see here or olive oil. It is an essential oil, which means there is no fat in there. A carrier oil or plant seed oil that can carry an essential oil, which is why it's called a carrier, right? Um, makes it a little bit more safe and soothing to the skin and not irritating for topical use. There's many oils that you can choose from when you're talking about carrier oils. Again, not every oil is created equal. You want to see how your skin reacts to it. Unrefined coconut oil or unfiltered or even olive oil that we find in every supermarket and grocery store can be very good for your body, but might be a little bit too thick for the delicate skin on the face. When we're talking specifically about the face, you can, your best bet is fractionated coconut oil. And we're going to talk about a new option that is a limited time offer. So you want to make sure when you're using something on your face that it's not causing cosmogenic effects. I use fractionated coconut oil sometimes on my face. Um, you can use um, other oils. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Actually, Izan is actually, if we can use it on a fractionated coconut oil on the face, we can. I'm talking about that thick white stuff that you can see on the slide that you get in grocery stores that might be you would use in cooking. I wouldn't use that on my face. Use the fractionated, right? The one that stays liquid at all times. Um, you may have heard of different oils like shea butters or jojoba oils, and you can um, experiment with any of these oils. doTERRA has actually recently coming, uh, come out with some blends of essential oils that are used for sensitive skin, and we're going to talk about that um, right away. Um, first on the hit parade, when I think about essential oils for the skin, I always think about lavender oil. This is really the granddaddy of them all. It has so many different uses and super soothing for skin can be used on people of all ages from tiny babies to our eldest um, members of our teams and family. It is gentle to use and just has a wonderful aroma. It's relaxing, soothing to the skin. I'm sure you have a bottle of lavender oil rattling around somewhere. Um, it smells fantastic, works great to relieve skin irritation, whether it's a bug bite, an ingrown hair, sunburn, hives. Um, it works terrific to um, cut and reduce inflammation. Charmaine says um, that she uses, I just used lavender with moisturizer on her face before she joined the class. So I get, I bet you smell delicious, Charmaine. And Anna says she loves, loves, loves lavender. Yeah, I have to say, what's not to love? It's a wonderful product. And I'm so grateful that we have it. It is extremely gentle. You can use it right on your skin. Use clean fingers when you're applying essential oils to your face, folks. We do have bacteria on our hands and I am not a germaphobe, but whatever you touch during the day, if you then go back and apply it to your face, um, you can cause problems. I was taught when I was a kid, never touch your face. Now I have made that a hard and fast rule in my whole life. The only time I touch my face is if I may be washing it or applying or taking off makeup. But in general, I'm not one of these people who's like mushing up my face all the time. I don't even really lean my, my head on my hand. And even when I sleep, I try to, I know it's an obsession, but my mom taught me when I was young and it, it just stuck with me. Your oils and your bacteria on your hands can actually cause um, breakouts and problems with your skin. Lavender oil can be used to soothe and fight acne as well as acne scars because of its acne antibacterial and moisturizing properties. It's perfect for refreshing, healing and controlling excess oil production. So it's it's just the best. I love lavender oil. I had to put it first because it's really granddaddy. Could have either put it first or last, but it seemed like we had to talk about it first. Next one that I really like is geranium oil. It is um, It has been used throughout millennia, used by the Egyptians for promoting beautiful and radiant skin. It's now used again to treat acne, reduce inflammation, and reduce wrinkles. Um, um, Sheeran says geranium is love. Yeah, it does smell like love. And to me, it smells like poor man's rose. So I use my geranium a lot, even as a perfume. I know that it's wonderful for your hormones, for balancing hormones. So in addition to protecting your skin and treating it, helping it to look beautiful, geranium is one of those oils that you can use as a one-two punch. Many products in the dermatological world use uh, geranium oil because of its ability to tighten facial skin and slow the effects of aging. 
You can add it to a face lotion and apply as usual. Geranium is antibacterial and antifungal, and it's shown to protect the body from infection as well as ward off fungi like athlete's foot. So you can apply it right on your feet. If that's troubling to you. Here's the other thing. You maybe you don't have active athlete's foot, but perhaps you go to a gym or a swimming pool or someplace where you do remove your shoes and you walk around barefoot or a spa. Maybe when you get home, in addition to washing up, apply a little bit of um, geranium oil around on the soles of your feet, around your toenails, just Keep yourself safe, folks, right? To treat a wound, you can add a couple of drops of geranium oil to a carrier oil like coconut and uh, like fractionated coconut oil and apply it twice a day until it's healed. And going back to our athlete's foot, you would add a, another way is not just applying it to the feet, you could add it to a foot bath with sea salt and soak your feet. So you get a nice little soak and relaxation and also get rid of any like creepy crawlies that you don't want on your feet. Um, uh, Eliana says that geranium helps to balance her skin. And that's true. I find that many people who use geranium feel balanced on the outside and on the inside. I have a very good friend who is French and she talks whenever you walk by her, she just smells divine. And she uses geranium oil as a a balancer, a de-stressor. And she said it helps, she tells me it helps her like nothing else. Um, next on our hit parade is our um, tea tree oil. Must have, this is a must, must, must have in every bathroom cabinet. If you have an older bottle of doTERRA essential oil, it might be called Melaleuca. We've made the change to the tea tree as, and you can see this here, Melaleuca alternifolia right in the picture. Um, it has the ability to work magic on things like pimples, blackheads, and skin that's producing too much sebum. The great part about tea tree oil is that it's a natural astringent. So it's not going to dry out your skin like harsh chemicals in a drugstore acne product, but it is going to, to kind of um, balance the, the production of oil in your skin. It is antifungal and mildly antiseptic. So if in a pinch, if you need to clean a wound, tea tree is the thing to use. And you can use it to sanitize something, even just to wipe down a surface. Tea tree is a wonderful essential oil. You can use it on a cotton ball or on a cotton swab and just dot it on if you need to. Um, you can use it on your gums even. You want to use it in moderation if you're using it in your mouth. In general, we don't don't ingest tea tree oil. We don't ingest this tea tree oil. There are other products that contain tea tree oil that we can adjust, uh, we can ingest. And that's been a change in our production methods over the last few years. So if you're interested in more information about that, please contact product support. But uh, tea tree is a wonderful essential oil. If tea tree is a little bit too strong for your children, if you need a little, I don't know, a gentler solution, you can mix your tea tree with a little bit of lavender. Um, lavender oil is going to um, soothe your skin and tea tree is going to stimulate the healing process. So those two together, especially for our little ones, tea tree can increase blood flow and reduce inflammation and the lavender will dial back the irritation. The, mi the mixture is great for things like sunburn, ingrown hairs, shaving irritation. So you can use that right on your beard, gentlemen, if you're having any sort of irritation or ladies, if you have um, any um, ingrown hairs that will really help you. Um, Ferry says she uh, likes tea tree and can remove acne from the face. And she uh, says it smells good. And Alex says, yeah, I like the way tea tree smells. Very clean smelling, right? And it's a septic. I feel like when I use it, everything just smells cleaner and brighter. Okay, here's the, if uh, lavender is the granddaddy, this is the grand mom of all the essential oils, rose oil. And as we know, rose oil comes in two different uh, um, delivery systems. This one, the straight rose oil, which I had to show you. And also we have a rose roll on. It is a little pricey, I admit, but it's one of those oils that you wanna have in your arsenal of essential oils, especially if you're dealing with any sorts of skin issue. It is a popular skin treatment all over the world, especially in Eastern Europe. It's used to moisturize and soothe the skin. It can be great on all skin types, 
but especially for sensitive skin and a little goes a long way. You don't need a lot. This is a five milliliter bottle. I've had a five milliliter bottle for quite a while. I go through maybe one a year, but really not more. Now I know some people love it. I tend to be a little bit more frugal with my rose oil, but I do replace my rose oil as soon as it runs out. I don't, I'm, I never, I'm never without it. How about that? I always have a bottle of rose oil again. Um, best way to use rose oil in your skin routine is to mix some with uh, a little bit of filtered water and then spritz it onto your face throughout the day to just hydrate the skin and heal. As an added bonus, you're going to have that beautiful scent of rose. And I have to say, I don't mind rose on anyone, whether it's rose soap or rose lotion. I just love, we also know that doTERRA sells a rose lotion, which is to help benefit our healing hands foundation. So whether it's our lotion or roll on or a pure rose essential oil, rose oil is really the way to go. When we think about rose oil, we also want to think about things like wrinkles, facial capillaries, and redness. It is very soothing to the skin um, and can um, give that healthy, youthful boost that many of us are looking for. So use your rose oil generously, if you will. Um, another one that we all have heard of, but bears a repeating frankincense essential oil, um, perfect for combination skin, whether it's um, oily or dry, or you have parts of your skin that are both. It's gained a lot of popularity for its versatility on every skin type. It does wonders for treating dark spots. So if you're plagued by, by bark, dark spots, whether on your hands or your chest, sometimes if you've been um, out in the sun a lot over many, many years, or maybe somewhere on your face, apply your frankincense oil. It is anti-inflammatory and astringent, mm -hmm. but it has some just beautiful healing properties. We know tons of other uses, of course, for frankincense and essential oil but the face is one of the, the ways we want to incorporate it into our routine. So if you've used any of the essential oils that I've mentioned so far, please tell me in the chat. I want to hear so far, we've got about at least five more oils that I'm going to show you, maybe even a little bit more, but I think we've just gotten to the, the fifth, essential, fifth or sixth essential oil. So if you've used these and you like them, let me know in the chat. Okay, next on our hit on our hit parade is helichrysum essential oil. Um, I love helichrysum essential oil for healing scars and stimulating cell growth. It's full of antimicrobial, antibacterial, and anti-inflammatory benefits that are terrific for acne and scars. I use it um, really as a as a kind of an all-purpose essential oil. I think I've mentioned to you many times that this is my mother's one of her favorite essential oils. My mother's 91 and she has really amazing skin. I have to say she has taken care of it her whole life. She has good genes. I'm not going to lie, but she really protects her skin and, and <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> mm. What happened there? I know I'm drinking cold coffee today. You're probably all thinking, is she crazy? but I was rushing and there was no hot coffee made. So I'm drinking cold. I want to be lively. Um, uh, Helichrysum has been used for th uh, thousands of years in places like Italy, Spain, Turkey, and Bosnia for medicinal purposes and for healing all kinds of skin issues like hives, redness, blemishes, and shaving irritation. Okay, so a couple of people jumping in. Annie says she uses frankincense and grapefruit, uh, yolk, Keen says uh, helichrysum and Ferry says, I love tea tree and frankincense. Bonnie says using frankincense and myrrh. Okay, that's terrific. So happy that everybody is using their essential oils for their skin. Um, and what else do we see here? Oh, Lee Ju says using frankincense tea tree every day. Okay, that's really good. And we want to make sure that if we are using our essential oils every day, that we're watching to make sure that um, over time, they're still working the way we want them to, right? Challenge yourself if they're not. Who else do I have um, talking to me in the chat? Um, uh, Jocelyn says, starting to change my skincare used to, to using essential oils gradually, but that's a good switch. Little by little, you begin to change. Maybe an older product runs out and you begin to use a newer product. That's a great way to go. Um, Faye says lavender. Sharon says blue tansy. Yeah, blue tansy is a good one, right? We're going to talk about that in a minute. Um, Copaiba also, interesting. 
Uh, Eliana says, I love the combination of geranium, frankincense, and myrrh in my face oil. Yum. And lavender does wonders when my hands got scolded by hot water. Yes, that's absolutely true. If you've ever had a burn, and thank you for bringing that up, Eliana. Um, lavender essential oil as your first defense. You're probably going to want to put some ice on there to reduce the swelling and the inflammation, right? But uh, combining it with some lavender oil right away can really help with scarring and with uh, uh, any sort of issues with the with the tissues of the skin. Anna says she uses Rose Touch as a perfume and her colleague comment that the scent is lovely. Also, she says she uses frankincense daily and applies some with fractionated coconut oil on her spine, rubbing two drops on her palms and then cup, cup them over her eyes. Oh, to improve her vision before she sleeps at night. Wow, what a great tip. Thank you so much. Um, that was Anna, sorry. And thank you, Anna, for, for sharing that with us. Jacinta says she uses frankincense, uh, myrrh, and sandalwood. Juliana says frankincense and geranium. Jasmine says lemon and lavender. Uh, UC says jasmine touch and rose touch. Wow, you are really using your essential oils. I hope that I'm going to be able to tell you something that you don't know, because it seems like a lot of you already using essential oils on your skin, which is terrific. Um, Betty says rose touch and frankincense touch. Nancy says frankincense and sometimes tea tree if needed. Okay, so we've got a lot of people using their essential oils every single day, and that's a really good place to be in. Now I'm going to keep going and maybe there's a few that you've never heard of. I even some have some tricky ones. I'm going to trick you a little bit today, but in a good way, in a good way. Um, Let's talk about lemongrass. Now, some of you may be thinking lemongrass on my skin. Yes, indeed. It acts as an astringent to reduce inflammation and to balance oil production. However, we know that lemongrass essential oil can be warm on the skin. So you wanna use it in moderation and you wanna make sure that you're not creating additional redness. But if you've got a particularly um, red or inflamed ac a bit of acne, you can maybe dab it right on the acne. It is filled with antifungal, antiviral, and antibacterial properties. It can be harsher than other oils, but that's why we want to use it in places like perhaps the soles of our feet. If we're um, being plagued with any sort of athlete's foot or ringworms, um, we can use it on our underarms. Again, dilute, dilute, dilute. Um, the other thing that you can do is mix it with a bit of filtered water as a toner to control excess sebum um, and oils on the skin. But again, very strong, use in moderation, but very, very effective. Um, myrrh oil, we, we uh, mentioned briefly earlier, but I love myrrh, myrrh, myrrh oil. It's been used his, historically. Some of you mentioned that I looked a little bit Christmassy today, um, and that's absolutely true. We use uh, frankincense and myrrh at, during the Christmas holidays to get that, um, to have a, a sense of reverence in our churches and in our homes it was, those were the oils that were given to the Christ child at his birth. And we want to believe that they have uh, historically, since they've been used for thousands of years, properties that maybe we haven't even discovered yet. Um, they were Historically, myrrh was used to treat wounds and infections. It is terrific as a mouth rinse. You can take a couple of drops of myrrh or essential oil, drop them into water, and then gargle if you're having any um, issues in your mouth. I don't know what I did, but I was eating something very hot the other day and I actually burned my lip. Um, it's not great because every time I'm chewing, I'm kind of bumping into it and it's very uncomfortable. I'm going to start using, I've been using uh, doTERRA mouthwash, but today I'm actually going to take a couple of drops of myrrh oil and dab it on there with maybe with a Q-tip or my finger for healing. It can be used, myrrh oil can be used to fight uh, that nasty, again, athlete's foot, ringworm, and acne. It can even hold its own against staph infection, which is fascinating. So you've got any sort of wound that or cut, even if you have um, um, uh, cuticle issues, you may be one of those people who tends to pick at your cuticles and then they wind up looking a little bit red and not so happy. Use your myrrh oil, it can be a terrific solution. Um, because of its antibacterial properties, it is a good combination with frankincense. Use it for minor cuts and scrapes and also chapped and 
uh, cracked patches of skin. So you could add a bit to, even to your lip balm if you wanted to. My lips are super dry because everybody's turning on their heat. The temperature is dropping. As I mentioned, it's zero degrees centigrade here today, which is really kind of cold. And we were where I was over the weekend, I was driving. I drove west over the weekend, um, about a six to eight hour drive. And it was kind of nippy over there. Um, next on our hip parade is chamomile essential oil. If you haven't used Roman chamomile, just like we use chamomile tea to relax, you can use Roman chamomile to calm and soothe your skin in a matter of seconds. It has incredible anti-inflammatory properties that make it ideal for people living with rosacea. It's extremely gentle, can be used both on, the, on infants and the elderly. So if you don't have your Roman chamomile essential oil, make sure you get yourself a bottle, especially as we go into the holiday months. Sometimes we, um, ladies, we use more makeup. Gentlemen, we may be shaving more because we're going out and we're partying and we wanna look great every day, but it can irritate our skin. Get your Roman chamomile essential oil. Um, Anna says, thanks for the tips. She has a bottle of myrrh, which she realized has been underutilized. Time to use it. Amen, sister. Use your Anna, use your myrrh oil. And if anybody else has myrrh oil, crack it out and start using it right away. Now, here's going to be a controversial one, everyone. You know that I'm not a big oregano lover. I know that it's a wonderful product, but uh, yeah, 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 I don't love oregano, but I know a lot of people who do. If you're a oregano oil lover, please type it in the chat. I want to hear from all our oregano oil lovers. And if you just want to put love or you want to give me an L or a thumbs up, all of those are good. I don't know. It's just not my favorite. I don't know what to tell you. It is a super versatile or uh herb, as you know, it's antifungal, it's a potent antiseptic, it can be used to treat and soothe things like athlete's foot, psoriasis, rashes, eczema, why, uh, why killing a, a wide range of organisms like yeast and bacteria. It can provide instant pain relief if you've had a bite or a skin. And depending on your skin sensitivity, you can sometimes, not me, but some people apply it directly to the skin. Some people love oregano essential oil. I've heard of people applying it without diluting it to their face. I can't do that and I don't recommend it. But if you love it and it works for you, I guess you got, you do you folks. I'm asking in the chat, let's see what everybody's saying. A couple of people saying they like it for immunity, but not for skincare, just like me. And um, um use it. Oh, uh, Debbie says to remind us that she likes oregano smell and she uses it on her nails with tree, tea tree. That's a great usage. The other thing that you can do is if you suffer from warts, you can apply um, oregano essential oil neat without dilution directly to the wart and then put a piece of duct tape on it to kind of starve the wart of um, oxygen. Interestingly enough, um, I went to a dermatologist and was talking to her about this and she said, yes, it's actually common practice, even in doctor's offices, to re recommend a, a, a spot treatment with duct tape. So everybody knows that duct tape is that kind of thick silvery tape that nothing goes through. You can use it for repairing. Well, yep, I guess you can use it for um, your skin as well. It's going to be irritating to the skin, but hopefully it's not going to pop off. You're not going to have to replace it that much, but it can be used um, with oregano oil. Anna says she's also a bit afraid to use oregano, largely because I'm worried I'll mistake it for another essential oil and not diluted enough, but it's really powerful and good. And Anna, you're absolutely right. Oregano oil in its place can be amazing. I'm just poking a little bit fun. And I know some of you really love it and use it for all different sorts of things. I'm just a chicken. I, maybe I'm an essential oil chicken. I'm not a general chicken, but when it comes to oregano oil, I'm like, for me. Um, Bonnie says she doesn't like the smell of oregano, but she likes it in flute or flume. Yes. And we talk about flute or flume. These are blends that people put together during the uh, cold and flu season, which can help them. And if anybody's got a recipe for flume, um, type it in the chat. If the first one to give me a recipe, I'm going to give you an extra little prize. Um, Charmaine says she feels hungry after she uses oregano before I go to bed. That's too funny. And um, Ashley says she uses it to clean her floor. Wow, Ashley, you must have the cleanest floor on earth because 
that will be clean. Okay, let's keep going. This is an interesting one, folks. Rose hip seed oil. Now, we do not at doTERRA sell pure rose hip seed oil, but right now, as a limited time offer, we are selling a sensitive skin carrier oil blend. Um, thank you, Yacinta. You're our first one for Booster for Immune. Uh, she says she blends oregano, frankincense, tea tree, lemon, and on guard. So you are our winner. Thank you so much. Um, we're going to have a little extra uh, bonus for you at the end. Let me write name down. Um, terrific. Um, unlike rose, rose oil, rose hip oil is extracted from the seeds of the rose plant. So I'm sure you've seen it. After rose petals fall, there's a hip, which is kind of a, a red, almost like a berry type of thing. It does have a lot of ascorbic acid or vitamin C. And um, it is very good for the skin. Um, while regular oil is extracted from the petals, this one can, um, the rose hip oil can be uh, for firming the skin, tightening the complexion and fading dark spots and scars. It is a heavy oil, which is why doTERRA blends it with other things. So uh, this sensitive carrier blend is 1650 US wholesale. It is only available through the US market and it is a limited time offer. Now, before I got on this um, uh, Zoom, I checked and it was still available. If it's not available, I'm sorry, but if you have one already, use it, use it, use it. Its primary benefits is that it soothes dry, distressed, and irritated skin. It protects the moisture barrier. It's lightweight and easily absorbed, hydrating and nourishing, aromatic. It's it's basically odorless. So you can blend anything with it. And in, it, this, our blend, our sensitive skin blend, includes grape seed, rose hip, hemp seed, taco ferals, and sunflower seed oil. Wonderful for sensitive skin. I would be using it on the face. And if you haven't had a chance to pick up at least one, pick up one now, because this is, like I said, a limited time offer. Okay. Um, next on our hit parade is a Lang Lang. Let's talk a little bit about a Lang Lang. Anybody get that sensitive skin oil? Have you purchased one? Did you not purchase one? Um, if you've used it, already and you like it or you have any recommendations, let me know in the chat. I'd love to hear. Um, Lang Lang is great for balancing excess oil production. It is also a hormone regulator. So you, when you use it, hopefully you begin to feel ah, a little bit more calm and any ups and downs, swings of hormones, you're going to feel better with your Lang Lang. It's good for combination skin. It also has antiseptic properties. So it's su suitable for small wounds and acne. It, because of its ability, uh, to regulate sebum, adding a few drops to your facial moisturizer can, or making a, maybe a DIY toner by mixing a few drops with rose water and mixing it into a clean, dry face. Now you could mix it with rose, but I would probably just get plain rose water from your health food store and then spritz it on your face. You could use just facial water, uh, um, I'm sorry, filtered water and use that with your Lang Lang again, making sort of a spray that you could spray onto your face. If you're in the habit of traveling a, lot, traveling a lot on airplanes, most of us aren't traveling on too many airplanes right now, but I know when I used to travel on airplanes, my skin would get extremely dry. And I used to always try to pat you know, uh, water with essential oils. I didn't often have sprays with me because they're kind of strict. Although I guess you could take a tiny one and just kind of pat a little bit of essential oil with some water on my skin to keep it um, more moisturized. Um, our next oil is clary sage. Now, you may have used clary sage before for hormonal balance. You may have used it during um, a time at that time of the month just to make yourself feel um, fewer PMS sim symptoms. But clary sage is actually a wonderful oil for the skin. It's anti-inflammatory, so and it will not interrupt your skin's natural oil production, which keeps skin looking like healthy, right? Um, you can add a few drops to aloe vera and fil filtered water to make a refreshing toner. And we're gonna, we've talked a lot about toners. You may have a recipe that you love that you've used in the past, let me know. You may be using one of the doTERRA toners that are pre-made or doing, making something yourself. 
if you want to kind of wake up your skin cells and strengthen the skin, clary sage is your, your oil. You can add it to some fractionated coconut oil to hydrate and cleanse without clogging pores. And you can use this throughout your body when you're using it for a massage. It can be very relaxing. I like clary sage. It has an, I don't know, hmm, if you were going to describe the smell of clary sage, to me, it smells like a blend of herbs with lavender together but it's only one plant folks. It is clary sage is one plant. It's not a blend. So just make sure if you're, if you're thinking of using it, you can blend it with other things. Annie says to remind us that she uses it with, uh, she blends a Lang Lang with lavender, lime and frankincense. And it smells so good. I bet it does. My gosh, that must be amazing. Are you applying? Let us know. Are you applying that right on the skin? And Callie says that um, she loves a Lang Lang with face masks. Yum. Okay. Do we have a lot of face mask devotees here? Um, I have to say, uh, I like a good face mask. Even winter and summer, you can use the cooling ones. In the summertime, you could use a warming one to kind of open up the pores. Face masks are a great way to go. If you're using, so this is the other thing I want to mention to you. I'm going to give you a tip in a minute. If you're a person who, you, who does gua sha, you want to be able to use something that is um, not just an essential oil, you want to use something that has a fatty oil in it, right? You don't ever want to be pulling the skin as you're using the gua sha tool. You could be using the sensitive skin oil that I just mentioned to you. And then we've got another recommendation for you in a minute, but make sure if you're going to be using your gua sha tool, uh, specifically on your face, but really anywhere, you want to make sure that you're using it with an oil that's going to be moisturizing, moisturizing, moisturizing. So I've got another quick um, this is a limited time offer, right? Our carrot seed body butter. Carrot seed oil, traditionally known to be super moisturizing to the skin. If you're suffering from dry, chapped, or cracked skin, try carrot seed oil. We have never offered this for sale before. I think it's going to be an amazing product. I'm giving you a little bit of a heads up, but I think it will sell really fast. So hopefully it will be on sale on December 1st. We've had a couple of I don't know, shifts and changes, things we thought maybe were going to be available are going to be available a little later. Whenever you see it, grab it. It's going to be worth it. Um, it actually, carrot seed oil has vitamin E and vitamin C in it, which is kind of interesting. And it's both moisturizing and nurturing nourishing, I guess nurturing is good too. It can um, stimulate the growth of new cells and tissue and regular use of this can protect against wrinkles while making the skin look youthful and bright. Now, remember, this is going to be body butter. So it's going to be very thick and emollient. So I wouldn't necessarily use this on my face, but I would use it on my hands, on my arms. I would be using it anywhere in my body where I really need moisture, moisture, moisture. For me, I always find, and I don't know why this is, my knees, the backs of my knees are so incredibly dry. I don't know if it's from socks or pants or I don't know what it is, but that area of my body is always really dry. I would be applying my carrot seed oil there regularly. Um, it's also been found to protect against infection that, thanks to its antiseptic properties and ability to detoxify. It's a popular tonic in Europe where the plant is known as Queen's and, Queen Anne's Lace. And I, you may have seen Queen Anne's Lace growing along the side of the road. I didn't actually realize those are wild carrots but um, tiny little seeds and you can see them there in the dish. And then the oil comes from the seed, not from the orange carrot that we eat in salads and cooked for dinner. Nope, it comes from the seeds, everyone. So this is 113 grams, 1450 US um, wholesale. Primary benefits are immediate and long lasting hydration, a nourishing moisturizer. It has a crisp grounding aroma. Remember, it's going to be blended here with spearmint and rosemary. So I think it's going to also smell kind of holiday-ish, which is nice and helps us to maintain um, a youthful looking skin, right? It's uh, refreshing and grounding and, and it is suitable for all skin types. We, I think it could be a terrific gift, but I would say keep at least one or two for yourself, right? Um, 
uh, we've got some, the other thing you want to consider when you're thinking about using essential oils is what kind of soap you are using. Many of our soaps are very drying, especially, com especially commercial soaps. doTERRA does have a whole group of different sorts of soaps, whether it's our balance soap or some of our, our other uh, spa soaps. Some of them have been limited time, ed limited editions from time to time. But if you see essential oil soaps available, you have one or you go to the catalog and you think, should I get that? Yes, you should. It's a wonderful product. And using a good soap that doesn't strip all the oils from your body, our body wash, same thing. It is um, cleansing, but doesn't strip the oils from the body. We don't want that kind of squeak, 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 squeak when you've just really washed your skin to death. It may sound interesting to have the little squeak, but that's not what we're looking for. We want our body to maintain its natural oil barrier. So use a good soap, use our body wash, use the cleansers when you're cleaning up your skin and make sure that you are not stripping all the oils from your body. That's the best way to keep your body and your skin healthy. Okay, I think this may be our last uh, recommendation. Yarrow palm, really, really love yarrow palm. Yarrow itself is one of the world's most powerful natural astringents and can tighten the skin while promoting skin healing. If it's paired, it's paired here with pomegranate essential, oh, I'm sorry, pomegranate fatty oil, right? And it's a one-two blend that creates a powerful, I'm gonna call it a wonder serum. It, it, I love this product. It comes out of the bottle blue. So as you apply it, you're gonna say, oh my, what is that? But I think you'll be very glad that you use this product. If you suffer from um, uh, skin that's combination skin, the combination of the yarrow and the palm will help to balance things like redness, swelling, acne, rosacea, eczema. It's a, it's a marvelous oil. I very often use it not only on my face, but I'll use it on my hands and even on my forearms because especially in the summertime, you want to have nice, youthful looking skin, but it, it can be used here on the, on the chest, ladies for the decolletage, use it, use it, use it. It really is a wonderful product. Um, it's shown here in the 30 milliliter side with the dropper top. And we've offered it in different sizes in the past, but whatever size you have, it's a wonderful product to use. Um, uh, Betty says to tell us that today she just opened another doTERRA Serenity bath bar and it's relaxing in the shower. And then um, Anna says that she uses the spa refreshing body wash, but it wished it came in a bigger bottle. Me too. But I will say, so even though it's a small bottle, I don't need to use a lot. Even the size of a small coin is sufficient, I think. And it lathers up so well and it smells so great. So even though the bottle is not giant size, it really lasts a long, long time. Good. That's a, a good uh, tip. But I think um, anybody who hasn't used the body wash, try it. I think you really, um, you'll really like it. Does the yarrow palm need to be diluted? Great question, Susan. It does not because the pomegranate oil is actually a fatty oil. So you're getting the yarrow, which is an essential oil with the palm, which is a fatty oil, which means it's basically already diluted. If you didn't want it to be so blue, you could add maybe fractionated coconut oil to it, but in terms of skin sensitivity, no, it does not need to um, uh, uh, be diluted in any way. Okay, here's a quick DIY for you. This is a whipped body butter. Um, the ingredients are two parts shea butter, one part solid unrefined coconut oil. So that's the thick white stuff that you're gonna find in the health food store or the supermarket. And then one part liquid carrier oil, like jojoba, olive, almond, fractionated coconut oil, sesame oil, whatever you like. And you're gonna melt the shea butter and the solid coconut oil in a double boiler, then remove it from the heat and let it cool a little bit. Stir in the liquid carrier oil and enough essential oils to fit your, your mood, your liking, whatever it is. I'm gonna copy this uh, recipe and I'm gonna stick it in the chat. Um, when the mixture starts to partially solidify, use a mixer, whether it's a stand mixer or a hand mixer, you know, that thing that goes <laughs> and a lot of elbow grease to whip into a butter like consistency. Now, I guess you could use a hand whisk, but you would really want to be building some muscles to whip this thing. I would say use an electric mixer and you'll be much happier. Um, but these kinds of uh, DIY body butters can be really fun 
to use and to make. And if you're thinking of a team product, pro team project, this can be a really fun um, team project to make. I think you can see, put the recipe in the chat. I hope you really enjoy it. Um, this class was put together for you using a lot of different information. I'm going to provide you with some of the links that I used. I've already provided a couple of them for you. If they are not working or one of the links is broken, I'm sorry. It's not, I don't want to torment you with uh, stuff that you can't use. But in general, all of these links should be cut current and fine. And um, I do, I try to do a lot of research before I get on here. Oops. I don't know. We'll try to do this in a minute. Um, the um, got some sources for you for you to use the um, everything from individual essential oils to the um, nat nature's pantry. I think that essential oils in general are the way to go when we're talking about our skin. All right, it's not working. I'll do it another time. Um, someone asked about skin tags. Skin tags are actually small viruses. I think you're going to have to probably dot either oregano or tea tree on them. If anybody's had any success with removing skin tags, let us know in the chat. I know a couple of people have already asked this. Um, and the th same thing, someone else asked about milia, you would use the same treatment for skin tags and for milia. So um, thank you so much to everyone who's here. We are um, gonna be back again next week with a new, a new um, presentation. For anybody who's in the US, we're gonna be staying at the 8 a.m. hour for our live. Yes, until the clocks change back, we uh, set our clocks back over the weekend here in the US. So we are now, it is now just uh, almost nine o'clock now, but we started at, at 8 a.m. That's going to continue for the next few months. Um, thank you. Thank you for everyone who's been here. Our time here is over, but your work has just begun. Make sure that you're doing everything that you can to keep your health, um, yourself healthy and also for your skin looking wonderful and bright. And also help your teams, help someone else, help your mom, your sister, your husband, a friend, um, I don't know, your son, your daughter, whoever, to really have beautiful, vibrant skin. Because there's something to be said from looking in the mirror and feeling good about yourself or maybe feeling, oh, I just want to hide my face. Just not, not a good thing. You want to wake up and really feel like, wow, I'm ready to go. And my skin shows my, my happiness and, and the way I'm feeling inside. We'd love it if you would join us on social media, whether it's on Facebook or on Instagram. We're always posting there every day. We're going to be running some great new promos in the weeks and uh, weeks ahead or on YouTube, which is where this present, hopefully you're seeing this presentation. If you haven't yet, please subscribe and ring the bell so that each and every time we come out with a new presentation, you'll be able to see it and get it right away. We are um, um, sort of a once a week with all of you and this wonderful group. Just wanna say thank you to everyone who was here today, whether you're watching um, live or you're watching us recording, this is a really um, a terrific uh, way to get together every single week and, and connect and chit chat. Thank you so much for having been here. Now, um, let me uh, stop the share, there we go. And okay, so we're still here. Oops, let me fix my shirt, yep. Um, this, I have to say, this pin up here, I just want to do a quick shout out, was actually a gift from um, a very dear friend um, this past weekend. And I just wanted to say, I wanted to, to kind of highlight it because it's really sweet and really reminds me of Christmas and holidays and, and giving and thoughtfulness. And for me, it, it means a lot. So I wanted to make sure that it was on recorded here for posterity, right? Okay, if you are on the, um, if you're on YouTube, I'm gonna say farewell to you. Have a wonderful week. We'll be back again next week with a, um, a new presentation. If you are live, stay on the line and we've got some great gifts and prizes that we're gonna be giving away. To all of our YouTube friends, thanks again for having been here. Again, subscribe and we'll be um, back with some new information soon. Have a wonderful week.